Well, thank you, and welcome to um, the Indianapolis Dr. Dan Workshop free group lecture and demonstration. We're, um, we've got a lovely room full of people here tonight, and we are celebrating our 10th anniversary of hosting Dr. Dan in Indianapolis. I can't believe it's been 10 years. Um, so I wanted to take a minute to say Thank you, first of all, to all the beautiful souls who make this work possible here. Thank you, because it wouldn't be possible without you. And thank you to Dr. Dan, uh, because I don't think I would make it through this journey without his guidance and his wisdom and his um, uh, incredible healing uh, and the gift of holy divine healing that he brings to all of us. Thank you, Dan. You're very welcome. Yeah, very and thank you, everyone here. And... Um, So, for the 10th anniversary of Holy Divine Healing in Indianapolis, we are going to um, complete the uh, Holy O Royal Correlator um, by perfecting um, the Holy O Health aspect of our being. Dan's going to talk a lot about that, and it's pretty fascinating what he's going to bring to light for us tonight. All I can say is, in getting ready for this workshop, in my lucid uh, dream state experiences, I have been holding planets in suspended animation all around me. I have been morphing into an amphibious being that swims through the oceans that connect all of the worlds of all of the realities, lighting up blue beings. And then Sunday evening, uh, we had a baby. I don't know who we is besides me and someone or something else. And But it was an adult baby. And I promptly put it in a baby carrier, and I've been carrying it around with me ever since. So whatever we're birthing, stepping into, bringing about, activating with our light and love, um, it's happening. Uh, so thank you for participating in it, and I'll turn this over to Dr. Dan now so he can maybe give us some clarity about what all this might mean. Thanks, Dan. You're very welcome. Thank you, Diane. And- Thank you for having me in your home for 10 years. And my, how time flies when you're having fun. So um, how many people have not heard this before? Um, That time flies when you're having fun. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, haven't heard about Holy Divine Healing. Uh, Anybody here that hasn't heard about this? Uh, um, Anyway... um, I love it if you ask questions any time along the way here, if something needs to be expounded upon or um, want to talk about it a little bit, just please raise your hand and we can sure do that. Um, this is my 25th year of doing Holy Divine Healing, and uh, it chose me, I, I, and then I agreed to it, but uh, it all started for me uh, 25 years ago this August at uh, my mother-in-law's bay house in South Alabama, Orange Beach, um, with a heat stroke. And uh, it's interesting that you think you're dying, and yet this is the most exciting thing that's ever happened in my life is how it turns out. And and um, But I had a, uh, a telepathic uh, communication with 13 crystal light beings, and uh, I got anointed with light, and it awakened me to my spiritual journey. And uh, that day started me down my yellow brick road, and uh, it's just been one day after the next, uh, primarily with the same um, modus operandi, and that is uh, living the parable of being a Christed being. And when you learn how to do that, it really takes all the pressure off of you. It's not up to you anymore. Your part is to do the parable, and the rest of it just happens. And so it's been a fantastic journey. And um, pretty much all about, um, and you know, it, it can really be the same for every person on this planet. Uh, Any time in your life that you're faced with uh, adversity, difficulties, problems in your life, you're really at a fork in the road, not realizing it, of course. But um, And there's two options. Uh, what humans do is they choose to try to figure it out and fix it themselves, not realizing that self is the least conscious part of you that has no knowing. And uh, it's responsible for the old saying that humans use 10% of their brain. And so uh, self really is the dullest knife in the drawer, and to turn any project over to self is, uh, 
it's going to wind up being a, a course in frustration usually, especially if you're talking about spiritual activity. Now, in man's world, self works pretty good, but you're talking about, you know, uh, manufacturing some kind of consumer product, you know, making a computer, a washing machine, a lawnmower. Well, if you don't know how to do those things, you're not going to get to first base. So you have to know all about that, orchestrate it with your brain, and you get a good outcome if you know what you're doing. But in the natural world, and the spiritual journey is of the natural world, it's quite the opposite. Uh, you know, the intelligence that makes the world go around, it comes included. And our part is never to duplicate that with our educated brain, but it's always about knowing how to play your part. Like growing a vegetable garden, you don't have to know what the seed knows to do that, but it is very helpful if you know when to plant, how to plant, and how to take care of plants. You can have a bountiful harvest. And, and uh, healing and ascending into higher consciousness are likewise uh, this sort of a relationship with uh, innate intelligence that uh, has created life uh, way beyond uh, our comprehension of, of what is or, or what uh, or what can be uh, as we continue to go forth. Uh, each step of this journey has been surprising to me. Uh, I'm the worst guesser there is. I, I, I could never figure out the next step, and yet um, when the next step is there to be taken, if you utilize the parable of Christ consciousness, it always works beautifully. And, um, and that's really uh, um, the true teaching of this, of this work is to teach people to learn to become a practitioner of the parable of Christ consciousness. And instead of trying to figure it out and fix it yourself, you have to learn to surrender your problems to your higher power. Your inner holiness that beats your heart is the higher power of life that you have connection to. And your own inner divinity is where you have to connect. And, um, learning to turn your problems over to your inner holiness, learning to yield to the will of your inner holiness, and that means when the whispering voice and the gut knowing speaks, you have to obey it. And then thirdly, showing up in your day without apprehension and worrying about what's around the corner and simply take your step in trusting your inner holiness always opens the door to miracles and the most wonderful things will come forth that yourself would have never uh, dreamed up ever. And so it tremendously increases the possibility of opportunity and goodness to come into your life to be a practitioner of the parable of Christ consciousness. It's, uh, it's really such a wonderful thing. So, um, you know, I started on this journey in 94. Um, I was a chiropractor at the time this happened to me. And um, it didn't take long until my path in life had totally changed over to this. And, and uh, it was not without uh, adversity and uh, uh, some abandonment uh, by clients and whatnot. And, and I actually started traveling to do this work because I was going nowhere in Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, so I had to... Uh, to expand my boundaries, I started going to Texas one weekend out of the month, and within a year and a half, I was going to Texas six times a year for two weeks at a time. It just really spread like wildfire, and it was the opposite reception that I had had in my home. Um, I had, uh, you know, full uh, schedules with waiting lists, and uh, people were eager to see me and ready to get going, you know, to, to do this stuff. And, and so um, I became a, a life traveler. So this is 25 years of it. And today I, I go somewhere every month except uh, June and December. I take off those two months, uh, one for vacationing and one for Christmas, and give myself a chance to catch up a little bit. But it's been a beautiful journey. I've met such wonderful people. Um, those that are seeking a holier way of life are exactly what my process is for. I, 
only respond to invitation and attraction. I do not proselytize or initiate. That's that's too too rugged of a reaction for me. Um, but when invited or there is attraction, I love to to do my gift for people, and um, and so it's a very humbling thing. Um, the author of this work is the inner holiness that beats your heart. I'm simply the servant. I do the will of people's inner holiness for them. As a servant with this gift I was gifted with years ago, and um, it's continued to grow and become more, and there's always a next step. And, and uh, you know, when, we, when I first started on this journey, the world was in the third dimension, and um, it's hard to fathom, but I worked for nine years in the third dimension before we had our first paradigm shift in 2003. Uh, when the Akashic being quit mutating. And um, um, that, that mutating beam of the Akashic beam uh, comes from the heart of the Holy O, and only beings of the Holy O can utilize that, that life beam uh, to create things that glorify our holy order and benefit all people and make loving feelings. So, and... Um, you know, I've never checked a person that wasn't from the Holy O. And uh, every person I've ever checked has a inscription in the crystal lattice of their spirit body of a 700 million year existence on this earth in an ancient world in a single life continuum where we were beings of the Holy O with a knowing consciousness. And all the bodies of our being work... Um, beautifully on knowing consciousness and only about 65% of our being can function on belief consciousness and it's all subpar to our original design and then the 35% that cannot function in belief it vegetates and decays and the picture of that happening is us growing old getting sick and dying and so it's pretty interesting um about all of that, and so we're going to we're going to talk about all this this evening, and um, and I love it if you have questions. Anybody got a question so far? All right. Well, um, it wasn't long ago that um, the cutting edge of holy divine healing was focused on a form of uh, discord that we all carried called carry on like you carry your luggage on the plane. And uh, you don't get rid of carry-ons by dying. You take them from one existence to the next. And they came in three different types. There was a fractal aberration of our genetic material. Um, that uh, uh, The chimeric genomes is an example of it. But, and you also get various forms of these competing factors of your own genetic material with medical procedures from blood transfusions, organ transplants, immunizations, and, and like uh, things of this nature. And they actually alter your own genetic expression, and, and that's never a good thing. Um, there's also another one that's a, a microcosmic aberration of our electromagnetic field, and, and this type is called belief syndromes. and we carry these belief syndromes deep in our unconscious and subconscious. Um, and they're usually dormant until one day we have an experience in this life and it activates or triggers one of these belief syndromes. And that can be the moment that you start doing a disease process or it can be an instance of where you react to whatever gets triggered, uh, stimulated by your outer world experience in a manner that when the smoke clears, uh, you're wondering what the heck you were thinking because you didn't have a chance to, take, to think it through before you reacted and your adult rational conscious mind of today is not in agreement with these things. And, and so that's another form. And then we have a holographic fractal of our pulse, um, and uh, of our divine presence, and this disconnects us from our divinity. And um, humans, 
and belief consciousness are disconnected from their divinity. And that's why humans have free will and free choice. They can choose whatever they please, regardless of it being hurtful or destructive to them or others. Whereas when you're connected to your inner divinity, you always choose that which glorifies your inner holiness, benefits all people, and makes loving feelings into life. So you go into become a person of divine will and divine choice. And well, in this 700 million year life experience we had in the ancient world, uh, sometime um, along the way we started getting bored with our 13 dimensional matrix of heaven on earth that we lived in. And we wanted an expansion of that um, matrix And we didn't understand, even though we had knowing consciousness, we did not understand that you cannot expand an existing matrix because you've got to have a total concept in mind of a matrix when the first stone is laid. So once they're made, you can't expand them. You can disassemble them and make new ones. We didn't understand that part either. And through intensely wanting this expansion, we broke one of our primary rays, our brown ray, that anchors our spirit body to our root chakra. And this created a necessity that we acquire understanding to go with our knowing. And so the plan of grand design, the high councils of the nine clusters of the all that is of the Holy O, which is our celestial home, they came up with a plan to set up a school of understanding. And they brought in a planet from a system of one outside of the nine clusters uh, to run this school of understanding. And uh, there were 87 life forms on this planet. And the head of that planet and this school was Yahweh, the God of one of the Old Testament. Um, the God of belief is what I would say he is. Um, uh, belief is in the Old Testament more than 2,000 times. And so it's really big into that. And, um, and 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 in order to go to the school of understanding, you have to check your knowing consciousness in at the door and consent to have the components of your trinity disassembled. And from there, you get to find your way back home, having one lesson after the next. And if you learn your lesson, you acquire understanding. And so we've been doing this since the dawn of time. Most people I've checked uh, have between 6 and 12 million incarnations in this school of understanding. And it's all about acquiring understanding. And um, the full moon eclipse of September of 2015 started a six-year exodus of the downfall world off of the planet. Uh, All of the downfall world stuff is coming up to come out. We're to retain the understanding we acquired through having the experiences, but the downfall rubble gets flushed down the holy old moon portal and is taken out of here and put back in to the system of one outside of the nine clusters. So it was really a pretty genius plan. Um, The only problem was we all forgot. (laughs) We were doing that. (laughs) And so if you're not aware of what's going on, it really does seem like a downfall world. And uh, a lot of uh, unpleasantries happen there. And um, But that's how we seem to acquire understanding, is by going through these experiences. And, and so um, in January of this year, I had, uh, I have a lady and uh, south texas that works on me every time i come through there we trade sessions and um uh, she's got an incredible gift and she just sits behind me on the head of the table and puts her hands on my head and things start happening and uh in january when i was down there um there was a real lush path with lots of beautiful plants and trees and coming walking down that path was a being in a white robe, uh, but clean shaven and with a haircut about as short as mine. Um, a beautiful smile, radiating love, and with 
bubbles coming off of him, and they were like filled with helium. They weren't like lazy, soapy bubbles that kind of float around. These were like going straight up, almost like uh, breathing underwater where your air bubbles go straight up. And um, he came and got into my morphic field, and and Janet told me that he was here to help with the following stages of ascension. And so uh, for 10 days, uh, this being was in my morphic field. When I would work on people, I could tell that it was uplifted and was grateful for that. And then I go out to the spring in Arkansas that I go to to get my water, and I got to have a communion with this being. And... Um, he told me he was the Christ of knowing and um, gave me an ascension chart that I find very valuable and useful. And on this ascension chart, at the very bottom of it, are beings of unbelief. And these are people of the first and second paradigm. Those par- the activities of those paradigms are like death, destruction, killing, war, robbing, stealing, cheating, and lying, stuff of that nature. And those kind of people are actually not capable of a knowing consciousness. They have to have this intermediary step of a belief system. And uh, this is what religion has done a beautiful job of, where you give a person a structured belief from an authority outside of them of a higher power with a savior model, And it takes these people in the first and second paradigm and brings them to the third paradigm. And that's a tremendous gift to life to do that Um, because people in the third paradigm can live in society. Not that they don't still have some problems, they do. But I'll take gossip, condemnation, criticism, self-pity, those kind of things over death, destruction, killing, and war any day, you know. So... uh, the third paradigm is a hundred times more conscious than the first. And when you're in this third paradigm of belief consciousness, you're having your lessons in life. And if you're learning your lessons, you acquire understanding. Well, you can take that understanding and combine it with your willingness to live the parable of being a Christed being. And those two things will metamorphose into the first stages of knowing consciousness That comes from your inner holiness. And from there, you have this basic knowing, absolute knowing. Above that's Christ knowing and then cosmic knowing. And at the very top of the chart is goddess knowing. And this is the knowing of our androgyne function. And uh, once I got that chart, it it was easy to see why all people's efforts since the downfall has always been to raise consciousness another level up the ladder. And uh, these levels, these paradigms, are actually logarithms, and one to the next is ten times more conscious. So there's a huge difference between the first and second paradigm and then the third. And um, and so it was really a valuable tool uh, to see that all things that have been trying to help people uh, since... uh, the dawn of time, there's been purpose in all of it, and uh, um, it all works uh, for beings at that stage of evolution. And um, I also know there's 177 million people that are light workers on this planet, and all of our gifts are snowflakes. There's no two that are alike, and yet our source is all the same. And these people are very dedicated and committed to their path because it feeds their soul and they help people get to the next step of ascension and they're lined up and down this ladder from religion on up. <clears throat> I have lots of respect for people in religion that goes into uh, you know jails and places of that nature and helps bring these people up. That's really rough work. I'm very blessed that I get to work on the cutting edge of higher consciousness and because those people are a lot tougher than I am. But, uh, that's really hard down there. But they're very dedicated. They do a great job uh, of what they do. And um, so as we continue our journey, um, um, we're almost to the point of those people that have been doing their work of uh, 
being through with the downfall world stuff and what's next after that is getting connected to your inner divinity and there is a mechanism known as the holy o royal correlator it's got seven elements and it's through these seven elements that we reconnect to our inner divinity and they are our angelic hosts of our archangel realm our cosmic coordination that gives us proprioception and our cosmic matrix, our galactic council, our divine command, our divine destiny, divine fulfillment, and holy O health. And this one of holy O health is up to be done for humanity this Sunday. And um, what this element does is it will reintegrate the knowing from our inner divinity into all 21 bodies of our soul spirit and presence and this is going to be a super healing uh, phenomenon for this to come on board and be given to humanity um, the parts of our being that won't function in belief can once again start receiving innervation from a source of knowing and it'll come out of its vegetative uh, degenerative state and start perking up and becoming lively again I don't really know the timetable of that to happen uh, but I do know it's going to happen and it's going to happen Sunday um, the other six elements uh, two were done in San Antonio last month two in Austin two in Houston so this will fill this out and um, when I was in Texas last month on a Saturday night me and another person that uh, I w have worked with for probably 21 22 years uh, this person Michelle her sacred gift is the ability to create new crystal lattice and to heal damaged crystal lattice and um, you know she doesn't know how that works I don't know how that works but when we get together it works and it's really phenomenal and we were given the task of uh, creating a crystal lattice for humanity to connect to the Christ matrix grid I didn't know where the Christ matrix grid was I had nothing to do with that that was all done on a higher level uh, but this crystal lattice for humanity I was told me and Michelle had to figure this out so um, and I was told there were four parts of it so we start working on it and of course I'm totally stumped to start with and, and I just kind of start communing with my inner holiness and I asked if this was already on the planet and it said yes and immediately I saw the Giza pyramid and these four parts turned out to be the Giza pyramid the Sphinx the 999th ley line that the Sphinx left foot lies upon and the South Pole and I'm thinking wow how does all of that fit together <laughs> well uh, then I find out that this Christ matrix grid is actually in the inner earth and it's up a hole in the North Pole or uh, the, uh, the South Pole there's a hole down there and uh, I've, I've never been down there to see it uh, but uh, I understand that it's kind of guarded that uh, they won't let you down there um, but this uh, Christ matrix grid is up in that hole and uh, through this holy old royal correlator that connects us to our inner divinity that's the part of us that connects to this Christ matrix grid and once that happened the Christ matrix grid connects to our inner divinity and then it goes into this o-ring at the south pole the o of the holy o earth is this o-ring and this 999th ley line crosses the south pole and it goes up into that left foot of the sphinx and then it goes into the giza pyramid and that pyramid um, i'm sure a lot of you know a lot more about it than i do but it's got four basic stars uh, uh, what do they call them star chambers that point at these four uh, star systems in our heavenly bodies and one of them is Orion one is Sirius another one is Alpha Dracona and the third the fourth one is Ursa Minor 
and um, and so um, I had all of this stuff backwards at a previous time. I thought that the star systems of, of those constellations were putting knowing consciousness into that pyramid. And that pyramid through the Sphinx left foot was disseminating knowing around the earth through that 999th ley line. But that doesn't appear to be accurate. It actually runs the opposite way. And it starts, you know, with our holy old royal correlator connecting to the Christ Matrix grid. It gets into circuitry that uh, goes into the star chambers. And, um, and so the, you know, last month, March, um, I go back down to South Texas again, and this lady works on me, and uh, this time she puts her hands on my head, and I go through a gate, and uh, well, I left one little thing out. Uh, uh, when I was at San Antonio, before I was at Michelle's making that crystal lattice to connect humanity to the Christ Matrix grid, I was walking one morning in, in San Antonio meditating, and I asked uh, the Christ of Knowing what his name was. I had been calling him Bubbles, and I, 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 he didn't like that. So no Bubbles. And uh, his, his name is Victory, and he's here for us to have victory over our human experience and, and for it to culminate the way it's supposed to by us acquiring understanding uh, with our knowing and putting that all together. And, uh, but I go through this gate, and there is victory and 12 beings uh, of a council or whatever. And uh, there were six paths, and each path has a scroll. And um, victory put uh, this oil on top of my head, and it just penetrated immediately and went into my brain. And my brain lit up like a city. And... Um, I consumed the contents of those six scrolls, and they were kind of put into a time capsule that they would be there ready for me when they were the next steps of this process. Well, that didn't take very long. That was, uh, um, actually, that was, no, it was uh, last Monday. Uh, it's when uh, the first one of them came in, and it was a path from, the Christ Matrix grid to Ursa Minor, and the next one came in as a path uh, from the Christ Matrix grid to the crystal capstone on the Giza Pyramid that's not there right now. It said it's in the Red Sea. That thing that's there now is just kind of a, it's what holds it on there. That's not the capstone. And then the, uh, the third one came in as... Uh, a huge pyramid that's in the ice at the South Pole. But, you know, things keep melting. We're going to find out where that one's at pretty soon. And then um, the next one came in as Orion, and then uh, Sirius, and finally Alpha Dracona. And those are the six paths that this Christ Matrix grid utilizes to beam this Christ energy throughout the heavens from the star systems uh, the holy councils of those star systems. And um, and then I find out, you know, I already knew there were six billion Earths in the nine clusters of the all that is of the holy O, and they're all connected by their oceans. And uh, this is being done simultaneously on all of these Earths. So when this gadgetry gets completed and we get connected to it, the nine clusters of the all that is of the holy O will be uh, totally... Uh, um, infused with Christ's energy. So that's going to be really an awesome change of what we've had, you know, from our human experience. And then the cosmos will become our playground because as holy obedience, um, at that level of conscious awareness, um, we are planetary being participating in all of the cosmos. Yeah. In fact, a lot of us are here that aren't from here because we kind of got trapped here, you know, when the downfall happened. Um, uh, there's a lot of beings on the planet that come from different star systems of different dimensions. Uh, but we're all here now, and uh, once all of this gets opened back up and back on track, we'll be able to go freely within the nine clusters once again. So that'll be a wonderful thing. 
Yeah. So we got a lot to look forward to, and um, you know, getting over the downfall world is, uh, you know, compared to the 700 million years of our original design as holy beings, the downfall world is kind of like going to summer camp to acquire understanding to go with our knowing. And um, but boy, this uh, this 13th ascension key has been metamorphosing. Uh, uh, like crazy, you know. At first, uh, we were to become the holy beings of the holy O with a knowing consciousness, and then we added understanding to knowing. And then, once we got rid of our carry-ons, we became a holy being of knowing that understands life and has returned to innocence. You reacquire your innocence, getting rid of your carry-ons, and then getting reconnected to your inner divinity. And then finally getting reconnected to this Christ matrix grid. And once you get these six paths integrated into your connection to the Christ matrix grid, I've been told that that is the point of no return to the human downfall world. So that'll that'll be a wonderful place to be. Meaning at that point you have purged all of the downfall draught from your being. Yeah, you purge it off and you will choose to be and the parable of Christ consciousness instead of choosing to do things yourself. Yeah, so so this evolution that we're going through, the ascension process, the achieving of all of that, it, it isn't about, um, you know, what we know or what we do. It, it's um, about clearing and reconnecting with our divinity within, and then that directs it from there. It sure does, and it's far greater than any knowledge that a person has on a human side. And I know that for a fact because I, I can never get what the next step is. It's always a big surprise of you know, what's going to happen next. But uh, I'm just thrilled that it's where it's at right now. And uh, people are really uh, um, getting this. You know, the group healings like we're going to have here Sunday is about giving this work to humanity. And um, I see people all the time that I've never worked on that are just a couple of months or so behind the people that have been getting the treatments along the way. You know, it's, it's really amazing. And then you'll find somebody that doesn't have any of this work like starting at scratch with them. But it doesn't take long for them to move through all this stuff. Once they kind of get them uh, uh, inoculated with this Christ energy, you know, walls start falling down and they start moving and changing real fast. That's, that's been really beautiful to watch that. Well, and it's wonderful to know that it's available to everybody and it doesn't depend on who you are, what you've done in your life, how good or bad you've been. As long yeah. as you breathe and live, you have access to it. Right. And every person on the planet is stewing in the energies of higher consciousness, whether they are aware of it or not. It'll show up in some forms in their life, and they'll, uh, they'll get this. So it's really amazing that um, uh, people are um, waking up every day. You know, I see more than maybe uh, most people do because I go around and people that are really seeking uh, ascension come to these events. So you see some, I see some really amazing people that are very far advanced and and, uh, and they've been doing something totally different. And, and like I was saying from the beginning, uh, all the light workers' gifts are snowflakes. There's no two that are alike. And yet we all have the same source to fill our gifts. So it's really a, quite an amazing journey full spectrum manifestation of gifts and ways to help people ascend. So that's uh, that's kind of beautiful, you know, life loves a bouquet, you know, it, uh, having it in various ways is stronger than just having it in one way. So that's, that's a beautiful thing. Any questions, anybody? So Dr. Dan, this is how we transform our world and we heal it and create lasting peace is by healing ourselves, reconnecting with our divinity, connecting into the Christ matrix grid, and expanding our consciousness so 
that we can express and experience life at a higher bandwidth of thought and feeling frequency. Yeah, and at each new step of consciousness, you create a bigger picture of life. And that, you know, any time in life that you have a problem, the real problem is, is that that issue has your consciousness maxed out. And it's like your head's against the ceiling. Well, the key is to expand your consciousness, create a bigger picture, and it will encompass that issue that used to be your issue, you know, and all of a sudden you see it in a new light of higher consciousness and have your moment of truth and get free. And that's a, that's really a fun thing to do. That's a beautiful experience in life. And when we expand our consciousness, uh, what we're doing is we're allowing more realities of life experience to inform our every thought, word, and deed. Yeah. Yeah, we go into new paradigms, higher paradigms, realities of consciousness that are created by additional dimensions of reality. And that gives you a new reality of consciousness. Which paints the bigger picture and gives you the greater data with which to access, and suddenly the solution is apparent to you, whereas at a lower level of consciousness, you could not see it. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So... The healing of all human issues is through higher consciousness. That's a, that's a beautiful thing. You know, and yeah, and good. so then the question I have is, okay, so this, I, I get it. Why doesn't science teach this and then I see? Well, because it's about surrendering to your divinity. Yeah, yeah, that's not really the science model. And I'm, I'm not... Uh, bad mounting science has helped in a lot of areas, but it's always about human consciousness leading the way, and that only gets you so far. You go a lot further by living the parable of the Christ of the world, not limited by uh, human intelligence. So one of the things I've struggled with on this journey is when do I know this guidance, this voice inside of me? this nudge, this feeling is my divinity and when is it my fractured ego body or what have you. Um, and I, I struggled with that until Dan, we were talking about it one time, and he pointed out to me that as you continue to evolve, you will innately awaken that ability within you. In other words, I can't go out and make that happen. It's a part and parcel of the expansion of my consciousness. Yeah, yeah, and that's, uh, you know, that is an issue there because, you know, in man's world it doesn't happen unless you make it happen. And, but in this world of the natural order, that's not a part of it. You know, knowing which one is which and how to be appropriate for which one you're dealing with will uh, govern the success that you have in those areas. So, yeah, and so it's a whole new way of interacting with life and being and showing up in the world. And at times, to me, it feels uncertain. I feel unstable. I'm used to having a plan, and I want to control things, and I want to know how they're going to work out. And I like having the belief systems that require conformity because then I don't have to exercise judgment and discretion and what have you. Um, and so the fact of the matter is I find as I disconnect from the lower grids and I connect more into the higher frequential grid that I can experience some anxiety as those still fractured parts of me are are being I'm letting go of them. So it's a learning process. It really is. And uh, there's you know, there's some tricks uh, uh, that uh, we pull on us and uh, you know that our negative ego loves to masquerade as our inner holiness. But uh, its manifestation is not so pretty. And, and that's really what I go by is, uh, you know, all life manifests in accordance to the laws of life. And we have our attitudes uh, and that's behind our choices and decisions and how those align with the laws of life determines what manifests into reality. And, and it's really hard to get around. If your choice of decisions, thoughts, and feelings manifest pain and misery, well, there's some, you need to go back uh, and research uh, the leakage of your manifestation because there'll be some 
parts of that aren't very good. Like if your if your belief, uh, I'm sorry, if your attitude is um, uh, fueled by belief, then you're going to have uh, uh, bad thoughts and feelings, make bad choices and decisions, and how that aligns with the holy order will make trouble for you. And likewise, if your if your attitude is fueled by knowing consciousness, you'll have um, positive thoughts and feelings, good choices and decisions, and that will align with the laws of life and manifest things that glorify the holy order and benefit all people and make loving feelings. You know, you get that kind of demonstration, and that's the bullseye. You know, that's right on target. So, you know, life uh, gives us a demonstration of what we're So that's really a good thing. So any any questions from anyone? Yes. So she says, I'm new to all of this, and I've heard of a lot of different cultures, versions of the downfall. What are we referring to? Yeah, yeah. the, the downfall that I'm talking about is actually a school of understanding where you have to check your knowing consciousness in at the door and consent to have the components of your trinity disassembled. And, and, um, and it is a school of understanding. We do that to acquire understanding, and yet if you're not aware of that, it's like a hell, you know. It's a miserable place to be where you don't know and you have these beliefs, you know, that are really, you know, beliefs are about the parts of life you don't know about. Those are the parts of life you have belief of. So the, you know, life is big, and any one person only... Um, um, knows a sliver of it, and it usually have to do with what you're educated in, what your life experience of your job and all of that's about. Uh, and so um, um, and then if you get outside of that sliver of knowing that you have the rest of life you don't know about, well, that's the part you got belief in. So it's really our opinion about what we don't know. And beliefs are programmings from authority in our outer world. And they started in our childhood, the big people in our life, mom and dad, religion, school teachers. You, you know, they uh, they program you with belief. And, um, and some of them work better than others. I'm not saying there's no benefit to them at all. But there is. It's definitely better than nothing. But... Knowing is always superior to belief because you never doubt what you know. Uh, when uh, negative feelings encounter belief, they usually crumble to doubt. They're easy to doubt. Um, you know, it's hard to have faith in what you don't know when it gets challenged. Uh, some people are better at it than others, but uh, uh, it, it, it was just never a real comfortable place of the belief consciousness. And, and you know, interestingly enough, uh, um, belief is the consciousness of the human, and uh, the human has got 10% brain function, and that brain function is focused on belief, and it comes from an authority outside of us. And so that's, that's the world, and that's a downfall from a world where you have knowing. And we had knowing originally, then we went to this human expression to acquire understanding by accepting a belief consciousness. And that's a downfall, you know, down in consciousness. And so, um, you know, the, um, the divine presence of our being is our pulse. And, uh, you know, when you was conceived in this life, at that magical instant of your creation, all of a sudden, you're one cell of flesh, and that one cell is pulsating, and there's a full-grown, complete.
include adult size energy field around that one cell, that that one cell grows into as you become an adult. These three parts is the trinity of your wholeness, your cell, your pulse, and your energy field, and they identify what they are. The cell is the soul body, the energy field is the spirit body, and the pulse is the presence, your divine presence. And originally, uh, you were created uh, to have nine pulses. And these nine pulses were in perfect calibration and synchronicity with the nine clusters of the all that is of the Holy O. And they were all destined to become the nine knowing centers of our brain. And, um, and the downfall of our divine presence occurred when one tenth of this universe was fractured off to house the downfall world, and that's what the universe is. So, so uni is one. The model of one was the planet that came in here to set up the downfall world. And, um, and when the, the universe was fractured off of this universe, we went from nine pulses to one and went from 100% brain function to 10%. So that's the downfall. You know, falling down. And then you get to have this existence at that state of consciousness for the purpose of acquiring understanding. Okay? Answer that for you. Yeah, so uh, with the downfall, um, it uh, corrupted our energetic matrix, and we deviated from our original design. And what we're doing now is returning to our original design, which is, is as a holy being, but also a holy being actually going to be an even greater uh, consciousness than body. All right. Any some more questions? Well, you know, it sure, certainly is seems to do that. It's time speeding up and the question. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, it, uh, you know, it's kind of a subjective thing, but... Oh, question is if our ability to ascend speeds up during this? Yeah. Because time is speeding up? I think that's really true. Uh, you know, it took me 25 years to get to this spot, but I think people now that, um, you know, they've been stewing in the frequencies, but when they just awaken to this, they can catch up quickly. You know, they uh, really put their effort into it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot easier to be uh, and a lot faster to get here if it's new in this moment. So, yeah, that's, that's for sure. And that's the work that we do with the group healings, too, is by putting it into the planetary grid, the grid for uh, the human being, so right. that they have access to this. Yeah, they don't yeah. have to go through everything that we've gone no. through. It's all included when yeah. they opt in. Right. Because they've already gotten a lot of this, and they didn't even, weren't even aware of it. They've just been studying it. Yeah, so if you've been discouraged by looking around at the world and saying, how are we ever going to shift this? It's all going to happen, and it's happening. It's just going to look different for some of these people than it is for us. But it's going to be easier for them. Yeah, right. It'll be easier, for sure. All right, any other questions? Well, I understand the question about time and how it's speeding up, and, and because I feel like there's, a lot less time, and I can't accomplish as much as I used to. And I kind of have it that part of that is as we disconnect from these lower paradigm grids and we start connecting into the higher paradigm grids, we move from a linear progression and a linear life expression and experience into an exponential orbital life expression and experience, which is randomly placed. Wherever you place your awareness is what you experience, and it's not constrained by linear time limitations.
continue if that's where you place your awareness. Yeah, it's all upright and tremendous. Fractals, microcosms, and holograms. Those are the three nuts, the, the trinity of life expression. So one of the things we've been talking about, well, two things have come up already in this workshop for me. One is I find myself experiencing what I call apocalypse, apocalyptic thinking. Something will happen and it becomes an apocalypse for me. It's like a major catastrophe. Uh, my house was creaking really bad during the night last night and I was devastated because I was convinced it was going to collapse and the foundation under it is falling away. And that's apocalyptic type thinking and I'm sure it's, con it's connected to the ascension journey that we're on and the, the, the point that we're moving toward where we do have this shift in consciousness and we can experience either a rapture or an apocalypse. So Dan's working on me to find out you know, where this is coming from and what is it about. And of course, it's my unconscious, which is why I have, I feel like I have no control over it. Um, but it's a part of my um, being that we can heal and clear now. And so he can clear that and heal that out. And that's fabulous. The other thing that, and I feel so much better, and the sense of doom and destruction and utter chaos is gone. Um, and so I said to him, <laughs> I said, okay, good. Does this mean that my house isn't going to make all these crazy noises anymore at night? And he said, well, your house is going to make whatever noises it needs to make. It's fine. But what it does mean is the thoughts you think about it will shift. And I said, thank you. I needed to be reminded of that. And I did. Because when we come up against our own stuff, I, at least in my experience, I promptly forget everything I've been taught, and I just blindly react. And so I, he very gently and grace, gracefully reminded me of that. And the other thing is I have said to him a couple times, I, I feel like I'm losing my short-term memory. I feel like I can't process some complex tasks very well at all, but other complex tasks I, I can ache. And so I said, I need you to test me and make sure I'm not losing my mind. And we talked about... As we disconnect from the lower grids and we connect into the higher grids, we no longer have a need to remember a lot of things. Because in the kind of life that we're going to be living as we return to our original design and our holy being state, it's an in-the-moment life experience. And it's no longer governed and dictated by, colored and influenced by our past life and what we remember, it's all determined by what we choose in each moment in the moment. Yeah, you don't have to remember your knowing because you access that to your connection to your inner divinity. So it's a different mind function than recalling information from a belief system where you got to remember. So you don't have to remember knowing conscious stuff. You access it by your connection to so you're not losing your mind. <laughs> you're not like becoming senile or, uh, you know. I heart. call it early onset Alzheimer's. I said, test me. Do I have early onset Alzheimer's? And it's just, no. It's just that I'm no longer retaining useless facts and information, but less and less, yeah. because they are not useful to me in this new form that we are adapting to and creating. It. All right. Questions from anyone? All right. Well, I guess we're ready for a demonstration. So we're there yet? Yeah. It's uh, 8 o'clock. That's pretty good. Cool. Oh. Talk for an hour now. I'm going to have to move this table, Diane, to make this work the way we've got these chairs here. Just a moment. Oh.
case, the lady there in the orange shirt. Looks orange from here, anyway. Okay, and we're going to have to clean this tray off. Yeah, you just lay up here like Diane was with your feet extending beyond the end of this table where your ankles can move. A little bit more. There you go. All right. Hold that. Let's see. What's your first name? Harriet? Okay. Did you know you were going to get selected when you emailed today? <laughs> <laughs> she said yes. Did she really? Uh huh. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you for answering the call. Yeah. Okay, and uh, this is a demonstration of Holy Divine Healing, and everyone here in person and on the phone will be affected by this in a very positive way. Okay, this session for Harriet is orchestrated by a living holiness that beats her heart. Dan is a servant with Christly conscience. Okay, holiness and Harriet, you know everything about Harriet from A to Z. You know everything going on in her life. You know exactly what we need to do here. And yes to all of that. In order to be comprehensive and complete, how many Celtic loops will be required? Two. And the first one, I, A, M. Which is the order in which you uh, speak the Celtic loop, the O, I, O, D, O, Alpha, Omega? That's what it is, yep. O Iota, O Alpha, Omega, O Alpha, Omega, O Iota, Omega, O Iota, O Alpha. Okay, our first date is in ancient BC. Okay, in this first clearing, 
there is all of your lineage patterns from your feminine and masculine, your past lives, all of your past lives, and all of the human carnage in your underworld is coming out of your unconscious into your health of your four common bodies, and that's your physical, emotional, mental, and collective spirit body. And um, everything about you in terms of health is uh, going to be cleared out of this. And once we clean this up, then we will put it back together again in your holy order. Want to clear the four mutating models of Harriet's life stream of 87, 68, 95, and 22. All of her carry-ons, eight trillion plus other things, six quadillion and eight resisting invaders, six quadillion and nine. Six quadillion and eight courting, six quadillion and nine resisting invaders. Pull all of this out of Harriet's unconscious of her shadow and all of its discord of belief out of her physical body, of her, out of her health, of her physical, emotional, mental, and collective spirit body. From 999,686,287,186 B.C., remove all contraptions, issues, collateral issues, all debris of the downfall world, all manifestations of all creations of the four mutating models of Harriet's life stream of 87, 68, 95, and 22, all of her carry-ons, eight trillion plus other things, six quadillion and eight cordings, six quadillion and nine resisting invaders. Pull all of this out of Harriet's unconscious of her shadow and all of its discord of belief out of her health of her fractured trinity of her human conditions and make it true for Harriet and then bring forth all aspects of Harriet's unconscious of her holy order of O of her androgyne being and all of its relationships through goddess knowing with her health of her physical emotional mental collective spirit bodies of her trinity of wholeness of Harriet's divinity into the holy order of O of Harriet through holy O, pure perfection, three times, and make it true. How many platforms to be cleared? Six quadillion and two platforms. Deposit all of it into the holy O moon portal for disposal, clearing, and cleansing. To holy O, pure perfection. To holy O, pure perfection. To holy O, pure perfection. And it is done. Very good. Want to clear four mutating models from Harriet's live stream of 78, 57, 21, and 11. Two billion plus other things. Two million plus courtings. 677 Yahweh blocks. Pull all of this out of Harriet's telepathy body. And all of its discord of belief out of her 18 life paths. From 887,686,258 years from now, remove all contraptions, issues, collateral issues, all debris of the downfall world, all manifestations of all creations of the four mutating models of Harriet's life stream of 78, 57, 21, and 11, 2 billion plus other things, 2 million plus courtings, and all of her carry-ons, and 677 Yahweh blocks. Pull all of this out of Harriet's telepathy body of her fractured presence and all of its discord of belief out of her 18 life paths of her fractured trinity of her human experience and make it true for Harriet. And then bring forth all aspects of Harriet's telepathy body of her divine presence of her androgyne being of her holy order of old and all of its relationships through goddess knowing into her 18 life paths of her trinity of wholeness 
of Harriet's divinity into the holy order of O of Harriet through holy O pure perfection three times and make it true. How many platforms to be cleared? Six quadillion and two platforms. Deposit all of it into the holy O moon portal for disposal, clearing, and cleansing to holy O pure perfection to holy O pure perfection to holy O pure perfection it is done. Very good. Now we need to put two ascension keys into the voids we've created by doing our clearings. The 20th key, the feeling of happiness, 157 to the power of nine paradigm of absolute happiness, the clear magenta crystal light, and the first cluster of the Holy O Earth, of the nine cluster, all that is of the Holy O, now fill the void created from our clearing in order to heal all things cleared, to fill the void perfectly and completely, and to interface all blessings of higher consciousness required to bring forth Holy O pure perfection three times into Harriet's life. And it is done. The sixth key, the feeling of dependable, 15 to the power of seventh paradigm of your angel realm, the lot of Melchizedek and the six billion plus earths, and the nine cluster all that is of the holy O, now fill the void created from this clearing in order to heal all things cleared, to fill the void perfectly and completely, and to interface all blessings of higher consciousness required to bring forth Holy O pure perfection three times in the Harriet's life, and it is done. Very good. Okay, now we need a new Celtic loop. Omega, O Alpha, O Iota, O Alpha, O Iota, Omega, O Iota, Omega, O Alpha. We want to clear the one mutating model from Harriet's live stream of 877,587,267. Pull all of this out of Harriet's Galactic Council and all of its discord of belief out of her divine command. Now, remove all contraptions, issues, collateral issues, all debris of the downfall world, all manifestations of all creations of the one mutating model of Harriet's live stream of 877,587,267. Pull all of this out of the Harriet's Galactic Council and all of its discord of belief out of her divine command and make it true for Harriet. And then bring forth all aspects of Harriet's Galactic Council, of her Holy Order of O, of her Holy O Royal Correlator, and all of its relationships through Goddess Knowing into her divine command of her Holy O Royal Correlator of Harriet's Divinity into the Holy Order of O of Harriet through Holy O Pure Perfection three times and make it true. How many platforms to be cleared? Six quadillion and two platforms. Deposit all of it into the Holy O Moon Portal for disposal, clearing, and cleansing. To Holy O Pure Perfection. To Holy O Pure Perfection. To Holy O Pure Perfection. And it is done. Want to clear the one mutating model from Harriet's live stream of 776 million? 277,187. Pull all of this out of Harriet's Holy O Royal Correlator and all of its discord of belief out of the Christ of Knowing. Now, remove all contraptions, issues, collateral issues, all debris of the downfall world, all manifestations of all creations, 
of the one mutating model of Harriet's live stream of 776,277,187. Pull all of this out of Harriet's holy old royal correlator and all of its discord of belief out of the Christ of knowing and make it true for Harriet. And then bring forth all aspects of Harriet's holy old royal correlator of her holy order of O of her androgyne being and all of its relationships through goddess knowing to the Christ of knowing of her trinity of wholeness of Harriet's divinity into the holy order of O of Harriet through holy O pure perfection three times and make it true. How many platforms to be cleared? Six quadrillion and two platforms Deposit all of it into the Holy O Moon Portal for disposal, clearing, and cleansing. To Holy O Pure Perfection. To Holy O Pure Perfection. To Holy O Pure Perfection. And it is done. And two more Ascension Keys. The eighth key, the feeling of dedicated, the 94th paradigm of forgiveness, the clear octave clear crystal light, and the neutron star of Harriet's origin now fill the void created from our clearing in order to heal all things cleared, to fill the void perfectly and completely, and to interface all blessings of higher consciousness required to bring forth holy O pure perfection three times in the Harriet's life. And it is done. The fourteenth key, the feeling of benevolence. The eighth paradigm of unconditional love to others. The clear golden crystal light at the constellation of Orion. Now fill the void created from our clearing in order to heal all things cleared, to fill the void perfectly and completely, and to interface all blessings of higher consciousness required to bring forth holy O pure perfection three times in the Harriet's life, and it is done. Very good. Now we need to do one recalibration with the Earth equivalents. Want to clear the one mutating model from Harriet's live stream of 278,288. Pull all of this out of the sustainability of the earth and all of this discord of belief out of the family of the earth of Harriet. Remove all contraptions, issues, collateral issues, all debris of the downfall world, all manifestations of all creations of the one mutating model from Harriet's live stream of 278,288. Pull all of this out of the sustainability of the earth and all of this discord of belief out of the family of the earth of Harriet and make it true. And then bring forth all aspects of the earth's sustainability and all of its relationships through goddess knowing with the earth family into the holy order of O of Harriet through Holy O Pure Perfection three times, make it true. How many platforms to be cleared? Six Quadian and two platforms. Deposit all of it into the Holy O Moon Portal for disposal, clearing, and cleansing to Holy O Pure Perfection, to Holy O Pure Perfection, to Holy O Pure Perfection, and it is done. Okay, Harriet, it's going to take you two days to transform through what we've done here and you've received from our session this evening 27.9 million blessings of higher consciousness 
and this will fuel your ascension into higher and higher levels of consciousness, allowing you to create bigger and bigger pictures of life that will encompass the challenging issues of your life, and you will see these things in a new light of higher consciousness, have your moment of truth and get free, and have a far greater capacity to keep your life in a wonderful place. So that all looks real clear and clean. May that bless you. All right. Come up now, like a sky hook. There we go. <laughs> Might be a little wobbly. <laughs> Right. Anybody have any questions about any of that? I've watched that now. But, yeah, there's a Christ knowing, a cosmic knowing, and a goddess knowing. And goddess knowing is at the top of the ascension chart. It's the consciousness of our androgen. Yeah. All right. So, you know, Dan, I was noticing in your work, it's very planetary oriented. And um, when I was having these experiences, getting ready for this workshop of holding these planets in suspended animation around me, I was very aware of what I was doing. And I was very aware that I was doing it. And when I got up that next morning, I thought, I can do this. And I took a piece of paper and I wadded it into like a, a sphere, a ball, loosely. And I held it, I held my hand out in front of me, palm facing up, and I put the paper in it. And I willed the paper to suspend in the air when I removed my hand. And I removed my hand. And the paper fell to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> And I said, well, I must not be doing it right. And so <laughs> I got another one. And I did the same thing. And pretty soon my living room was littered with balls of paper on the ground. And what I've come to realize is that I always had it that these gifts of higher consciousness, expanded awareness, higher levels of conscious awareness, um, mean mind over matter. And what I'm coming to realize to understand through my own experience is it's not about mind over matter, it's mind as matter. And that this journey is one of reunifying us with all life. And it's through that union with all life that we gain access to all that is, all wisdom, all experience, all powers, all everything. Okay. Yes. Are the numbers you come up with intuitive yeah, through the yeah, work with the feet? Comes through the, uh, the numbers come through the patient's feet, and um, I normally don't even have to look at your feet. I just touch them, and I can get the numbers. They're pretty easy. Yeah. 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 You can you can go through the numbers real fast. So, yeah, it, uh, it's always been about numbers. It's really kind of a language that saves a lot of words. And um, you just kind of do it in numbers. And, um, it makes perfect sense to me, um, but that doesn't mean it does to anybody else. But it, um, it's easy to do with numbers. It's just a good language. Yeah, so numbers is it. Numbers and feelings. Sacred tones. And shape. Yeah. The circle, the triangle, so that's sacred geometry. Yeah, yeah, there's some of that also. And, uh, but it's a language that fits all together and allows me to express uh, what I'm trying to accomplish here. So. Well, which means that it's the language of all life, meaning that all life is organized by virtue of these principles. I love it. Yeah, it gives you a hand of the work. And so, Dan, also, you always start out your um, clearings here with the um, 
O iota, O alpha, omega, in whatever order you get guided to do it in, that's what the A-I-M is, I get that, is the, it, and this is the Celtic loop, is the Celtic loop um, that which commands the organization of the energy in alignment with our stated intention. Well, it, it's uh, the way that I uh, use it is like uh, un un undoing the tumblers on a lot. Do that loop in the right order, you're ready to go. It's open for you. And it will respond to what you, your command is. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. If you got the loop right, you can get it wrong. I always have to check that. But, you know, but when you get it right, it works really good. It unlocks it. Unlocks their problem and allows you to get in there and make these changes. Oh, okay. So that it's the doorway, the gateway into the shift that, that is, Your Holiness is seeking to bring about. That's right. That's right. It allows you to uh, get things in the proper sequence so that you can undo the problem and put in the solution. That's what it does for you. And then, you know, uh, the next one, I always ask how many clearings do I do with this loop? And, It's usually two. Sometimes it's one. Sometimes it's three. Normally two is, is uh, the common answer. And then once you've done two of them, it, that, that uh, loop won't work on the next one. You have to get the loop on it in order to get the tumblers on the lock right so it unlocks. Which is basically unlocking the matrix that's holding that mutated model in place. That's it. Yeah, and uh, O-I-O-T-A is the icon for divine presence, O-Alpha for the Holy Soul, and Omega for the Holy Spirit. In the, in the loop, you use the icons. But it can be in any order. It's just whatever it says it is. And it allow you to unlock the problem and get in there and work on it and put the solution in. So that's why we use the loops. Yeah. So they have universal applications in all forms of life. Yeah, universal applications, that's it. Yeah. So what do y'all think about all this? Kind of blow you away? Or? So we're going to be reactivating the um, um, pathway of Knowing consciousness, thinking, pyramid, ultimately. That's right. Uh, we just got to get these paths hooked up on people. And, uh, you know, most of the people I worked on today, I, I got you to the front door of the Christ Maker's grid. I got you reconnected to your divinity and finished up the final parts of uh, your clearing. And Harriet, who I've never worked on before, uh, that's exactly what I did with her. So she was right there with the rest of us. And, um, but Harriet, she does her work, I'm sure. Other things that she's done to get her to hear the line. So um, all that stuff works just beautifully. Yeah. Okay, any, any more comments? Yes, Annette. We benefited from the work that you and Harriet did together. And I think I heard you say it would take about two days to integrate this. Will it take that for us, too? Everybody got that. It'll show up in people's sessions. I'll be skipping over a lot of this stuff. Yeah. But not to worry. I have other stuff. <laughs> I have I have six paths to work on with you. Yeah, so we have a lot to do this time. Well, I haven't gotten to those paths that had scrolls with it that I was. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's all new. That just happened uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I haven't gotten to that point uh, with people in session. I just got it myself yesterday, the, the last one, or the day before yesterday, before I came on this trip. But it's there, and I know I can use it if a person is that far along. Um, 
the people that have multiple sessions by the last session, I know I'll be working on those paths. I may not get all of them done, but I will get a lot of them done. And, and uh, the rest of them will be done when I get here. You know, uh, uh, I was here uh, last in August. Yeah, last year. And see, I did carry-ons after August. I discovered those. And uh, I didn't take carry-ons off of anybody that comes on a regular basis last time I was here, and not one of you have had any of them this trip. Yeah, so that's evidence that you get this stuff when I'm not here. All of these groups are connected that I travel around and do, and each group gets what I do to the other groups. Yeah, it just, it's malignant, you know, <laughs> it's, it it's spreads really good. In a good way. In a good way. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They were clear. Yeah, they were all clear. Yeah. And it, it, it looked really more like uh, uh, air bubbles from somebody breathing under water. And it didn't look like soapy, lazy bubbles that were floating all over. That's where blue music comes from. The blue, yeah, the blue beings are the arcturians. And people see blue a lot when I work on them, and the arcturians are working on them. Some, Is that one of the scrolls? No. Yeah. And then purple is another commonly seen color, and that's Pleiadian. You know, I, I never really thought about that. Um, I, yeah, if the bubbles had a consciousness, I never thought about that. But it's so amazing that that was happening. They didn't have bubbles coming off of it. So I'm sure it had some kind of meaning that I haven't tapped into. It's a good question. Well, we're probably in store for a lot of that. I think so, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot more to understand about this than I understand for sure. I just have a little skinny on it, but there's a lot to it all. Well, um, when I when when Victory came into my morphic field, I was told that he was here to help with the following stages of ascension and. Uh, I don't know if, if, it, if it was involved in that stuff or not. It might have been just, con you know, connecting to the Christ Factor's grid is his primary function with me. Yeah. So that's that's what it's about. It's, uh, it's an intelligent being that knows what he's doing to connect our Holy O Royal Correlator to the Christ Factor's grid and then the Christ Factor's grid to our inner divinity. And then we're in the loop of... Um, of going through the South Pole and the 999th ley line, and right on up to the uh, uh, the holy temples of the star systems that are in that Giza pyramid. So it puts us in the divine flow, get connected to that stuff. So that's that's amazing, and 
And, you know, to me it's so amazing that that stuff has been on the planet our whole life. We've been looking at it for years, and it's all been dormant, you know. And, but, boy, this stuff is ready to go. And uh, nobody can turn this stuff off. You know, no government or anything else. It's happening. And it uh, goes through the morphic fields. And, and uh, the best protection that higher consciousness has is that things of lesser consciousness don't know it exists. And things that would oppose it doesn't know it exists. It's very real. There's, uh, there's no stopping it. It's, it's unfolding. So that's a beautiful thing. Well, and apparently in perfect timing because Indianapolis recently installed a sculpture downtown titled Victory. Oh, cool. Yeah, uh, a, a good friend of hostess of mine in Houston has a Gnostic book, and Victory is in that book. And I, I had no idea. Some of y'all are, y'all know about that. Okay, it's a good deal. I, uh, I could learn something from it. I don't, I don't know what that's about. All right. Um, everybody satisfied? Your questions have been answered? And, well, very honored to bring you this uh demonstration and lecture this evening, and uh, may it serve you well, and thank everyone on the phone, um, and come join us Sunday when we hook up a holy old royal element of a correlator to infuse knowing consciousness into all 21 bodies of our soul, spirit, and presence, so that'll be something that'll really be wonderful for everybody, and so thank y'all very much, and we'll talk soon. Goodbye.